Let's walk through this acronym of treason. And I tell you this, I use this acronym because six different times the betrayal of Judas, the traitor and his treason is highlighted, not by me, but by God and his word. Repetition means emphasis. God is telling us this is the focus to bring glory to God. First in verse one, the T of treason is for this transition. I want you to recognize that John 13, one is like biblical sorbet. God has given this to us, not as content for the upper room discourse, but to prepare us. We're leaving the first half of John, the public ministry where Jesus was pouring out. And now we're coming into the private ministry of Jesus where he's gonna begin to pour in to the few, to the special, chosen, set apart, true disciples of God. Note the time, he's making a time stamp. Now, transition point. When Jesus knew, note this, because Jesus is never gonna be surprised through this whole account. He was never taken off guard. He was never a victim. He was always victorious. And even the cross is his crowning glory. He says, the time has come to depart out of this world to the Father. Having loved his own, he says, I'm going home. Having loved his own, the elect, who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Friends, John 3.16 tells us that God so loved the world. He loves everybody, but he loves the elect special. He loves his children that will be with him eternally differently than he loves all of humanity. I ask you, do you love the children in your neighborhood? I pray you say yes. Do you love the children of our community that will come to VBX? I pray you say yes. Are you honest enough to say you love your children in a different, special way? Yes. God loves his own, and he loves them, Scripture says, to the end. Some of your passages or your translations will say he loved them with the utmost or something to that effect. Listen, the word end here means completeness, perfection. He's not saying he loved them for a long time. He's saying he loved them to the point of glorifying them eternally as his own. He loved them and captured them by grace. He loved them and redeemed his own. Not everybody, his own. Friends, do you know this love? If you don't, I ask you to cry out to Jesus. This is all about him bringing glory to himself and to God the Father by dying so that you will know this love. Romans 8, 35 through 39, God's word says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We were considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will ever be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the love. The transition now is going from telling the world his truth to now pouring into his people and saying, I have you. If you're mine, don't you ever worry. I've got you to the end.